silly uh, and would do a lot of voices and annoy my family. And, um, and I'm really glad that I ended up doing comedy. I feel like Mark and I get to create our own world and create our own material. And so, I don't know, I feel like it's, yeah, it's what I want to be doing anyway. And I'm, I'm glad I get to do it. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was more of a, we were both the youngest growing up. And when you're the youngest, I feel... Uh, you, you know, you need to really make a spectacle of yourself to get the attention that uh, from the, from your family, just because they've kind of been through it all. You know, but look at me. So I was always I was like him, really young, really just silly and ridiculous, and, and always screwing around. But I think it took me a little while to admit that I was going to do this for a living, uh, and I'm really glad I did. But it, I really thought, you know, I got a lot of sort of, you know, you know, I should really have something to lean back on, you know, and then I realized that there's nothing in the world I'd rather do, so I just kind of decided to join up with this guy and <laughs> <laughs> spend the rest of our lives together. Okay, okay. All right, so, so keeping that in mind, uh, what were, who were some of your, you know, comedy idols growing up when you guys were, you know, baby comedians as you guys, you know, like to <laughs> corner yourself? Baby comedians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. Eddie Murphy was huge for me. I used to listen to. I had Delirious, uh, which was one of his stand-ups uh, shows on cassette, and I used to. Li I had a, like a, a auto reverse tape player that I would fall asleep to, and I, I guess it would just play through the night. So Eddie Murphy was a huge one for me. Kind of everybody of that. Oh, so you would just, Era. like, the auto-reverse, like, you would play the first half and yeah, play and the second flip, half, like, and would go back Somewhere in the, the night, it would go, <laughs> right. and then, Yeah, I remember that. I had one of those. He would start it, continuing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we watched a lot of cartoons. I think we both watched, like, Bugs Bunny and stuff a lot. And I, I, I always really loved Christopher Guest's movies, um, mm -hmm. Spinal Tap and, and that kind of stuff, and Chevy Chase. <laughs> yeah, Chevy Chase, John influence. Candy. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole different generation, but those guys really informed us. All right. Uh, uh, so, so uh, at what point did well, at what point did you guys uh, acquire the name Pajama Man? Is there you know story behind you know how that came about or? There actually is. We when we first started touring, we we wore pajamas because we wanted a, an outfit that was really uh, neutral, and we just kind of settled on it. But we didn't call ourselves the Pajama Men for a long time. We had a cooler name. We were yeah. called Sabotage. We were called sabotage. <laughs> That's true. And we went. We were Sabotage. We for, might go back. I don't for, know. For, yeah, I think <laughs> maybe. For like five years, we were Sabotage. And then um, uh, Kelly Leonard, a man over at Second City, the vice president over there, was like, guys, your name, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't represent you. And it sounds violent, and you guys are so sweet. Yeah, it, it's so he, he really, he really, it took some convincing, um, but we finally were like, all right, fine. And the thing is, it's like, we, people were already calling us the pajama guys, or just like using pajama when they described us. So, yeah. So Second City had taken us on, they were trying to brand us, they were trying to get us out into the world, and part of that process was giving us a more marketable name, and I think it's. I think it worked. I think Kelly was right. I mean, I think that we wear pajamas. Pajama men doesn't really mean anything, but you remember it. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, now on to the show in the middle of no one. Um, in terms of of the story, the uh, show takes audiences on quite a journey. So, um, if you were to explain it for audiences that you know haven't seen it yet, you know, how would you describe it? Well, it would sound really bad. <laughs> it always, and that's true. It all, like, our stuff always sounds pretty, uh, like, bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, because I, mean, I don't know the words that you need to use. But, you know, it's physical theater already. That sounds pretty lame. I don't know. Yeah, so, oh, yeah come to our physical theater show. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sounds riveting. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's pretty crazy and chaotic and original. Like, I do stand by what we do. And, um, how we, I, I don't know how we would describe it, but it, we play a ton of characters. It's a very minimal set. It's just a couple of chairs. We weave together a few storylines. And there's payoff. There's a payoff in the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of laughs along the way. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> uh, when we create our shows, we, 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 we do it through improv, and so there's a lot of just like sort of disparate kind of things that don't really work together with, you know, initially. And then we find ways to thread them together. All the while, we have a theme or kind of an idea that we want to put them in, in place with. And so eventually, we just stick it all together. But really, the, the, the plot 
and the theme of the show are just kind of there to keep the, the action moving. Yeah, it's, it's a container to hold the jokes in. Because <laughs> <Really. laughs> right, right. the, the main point of what we're doing is being funny. So okay. hopefully that's what we do. Okay. Uh, well, to add to that, um, the show, not to give anything away, um, has drawn comparisons to Commedia dell'arte. Um, my guess is probably because of the improvisational, you know, elements of the show. But, you know, from what I've seen and what I've read, um, not to get a little uh, kind of like theater nerdy, but <laughs> I, I know you guys uh, commented on it uh, being somewhat like physical theater. It, I also got, uh, got a feeling of uh, attack theater as well. Um, in terms of uh, you know a style or a philosophy that that you guys use. So with with that said, what I know you already said physical theater, but what other like performance styles or comedy related philosophies that you use when you were developing the show? Uh, first of all, you just nerded me more than I've been. What's <laughs> yeah, attack theater? Attack theater. Attack theater. We're not, yeah. we're not familiar with attack theater. Um, yeah. Attack theater is is uh, it's kind of like a visceral type of of uh, theater in which you have uh, you have uh, audience uh, you have a uh, performance that that put together you know shows that are somewhat improvisational, and they just they they whatever they do is to get a reaction out of the audience. It may be positive, it may be negative, but it's the whole purpose is to get a reaction. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, there's, the, I mean, especially when we were first starting, there was more of an element to that, but it was, al it was always for comedy, you know? Yeah. There, it, was, it was never, we, we were never, it was never to shock or be mean, yeah. It was, I mean, shocking in, 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 in comedic ways, you know, yeah. comedy is all about surprise, but, you know, shock definitely is in that Venn diagram. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Attack theater, um, <laughs> mime, <laughs> yeah, clown. Uh, um, what was the question? Uh, what uh, what other elements what other, are in the? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I, I I feel like we 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 really have cut our own path in a lot of ways in the way that we approach what we do and. Uh, a lot of it's just Mark and I in a room or in front of an audience improvising, coming up with the material and finding an, a way to piece those things together. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, there are definitely, you know, you, you don't ever want to discount the people that came before you or the people that influence you. Um, so, I guess, to, to theater nerd out, like, Lecoq uh, would be an influence. Uh, I, Comedia dell'arte, yeah, kind of. I think it's more of a coincidence. It's just they, you know, way back then they were doing scripts that were skeletal and then improvising around uh, that, and, and that's great, and we're doing that now. But I, I sort of think that that's just an inherent human thing to do. <laughs> uh, improvisation and playfulness is, uh, wasn't invented, or do we just continue to discover it as, as we go on as performers? All right. Uh, well, well, great. Uh, so, so following the uh, the run of the show here in uh, D.C., uh, you know, what, what what are your you know plans following this? Well, we're writing a new show that will actually start the process of while we're here uh, running this show, uh, and we'll tour that um, around the world. Uh, yeah, and we're also writing a few uh, TV and film things that we're, we're trying to get off the ground, which I think. Is really exciting and really fun to do, but it's a whole different process that world <laughs> than, than writing for theater. Um, so that's been a learning curve, but uh, a really exciting one. Okay, and are you doing another run of this show? You know, in another uh, another city elsewhere? Uh, this is it. I think this is this is the end of the line for this show. I think we're going to take it and have it bronzed. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do with it. Uh, it but I think we're done. Yeah. We recently. Uh, performed a show that we hadn't done in a while that we had basically taken and bronzed before and it always feels a little strange after you after we write a new show to, to start doing the, the, an, an older one yeah um, you kind of i feel like we have to leave this one behind completely you gotta go in front you can't go back and be like how why did that one work too much you sort of have to just look ahead and try to create something new so i'm excited about writing something new it'll be sad to put this one to bed it's exciting to be here in dc and you know at such a great theater and have this be the last run of it. It's been a great run with this show. Cool, cool. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you guys for your time. You. And, uh, you know, good luck with the performance uh, tomorrow. Yeah, cool. thanks. thanks a lot. Hope to see you there. <laughs>